Good afternoon, everyone. I hope all of you had a good lunch and have had a great day here today. And I would like to start by thanking Kate and David for a wonderful show here. Last night was absolutely spectacular. Um, besides the things that Kate said I do, I also work with the Vatican. Um, and the Pope has issued an encyclical that says that business has to become more ethical in the way it operates and also what we do to contain modern day slavery and also to promote sustainable development goals. Um, this session, we will have three speakers besides myself. I will lay the groundwork for corruption and also ethics in business. And then I will invite each of the speakers to um, uh, say a few remarks. Um, corruption is a very, very heinous crime. Uh, it has been estimated that as of 2016, it amounts to $1.5 trillion. This is 2% of global GDP. And to give you um, some comparison, if all poverty in the world had to be reduced, it would cost $1.7 billion. So you can see the correlation between corruption, ending corruption, and for poverty. It's also shown by empirical studies that it is the poor that pay the highest percentage of their income in bribes. For example, in Paraguay, the poor pay 12.6% of their income to bribes, while high-income families end up paying 6.4%. Comparable numbers in Sierra Leone are 13% and 3.8%. Every stolen dollar robs the poor of an equal opportunity in life. Those countries that have been successful in, um, in combating corruption have shown that they are able to use their human and financial resources more efficiently to attract foreign investment. And this has indicated that they reap a 300% dividend for improving governance from weak to strong. Transparency International, which is a leading body that monitors corruption on a global basis, has said in 2016's report that not a single country in the world has a perfect score. So this is a problem that exists absolutely everywhere. Um, the index also highlighted that this problem is not going away. In fact, more countries performed badly in 2016 as compared to previous years. Um, what this has meant is that increasingly there are people who take to the streets. There are movements that have been mobilized, populist movements, to get rid of leadership, political leadership, which is corrupt. Brazil is a case in point, and the youth played a very important role in making this happen. The United States has done a lot to combat global corruption. Under the Obama administration, the Department of Justice and the SEC have fined billions of dollars to companies that have behaved badly. The question is whether the Trump administration will continue in the same vein as the Obama administration or not. And early indications are that with the repeal of the Dodd-Frank legislation that required oil and gas companies to be more transparent as to payments that they make to foreign governments, perhaps indicates that it will go backwards. Um, the other point that I would like to make, and then I will conclude, is the SDGs. Now, all of you heard yesterday about the Sustainable Development Goals, um, and as far as corruption is concerned, the relevant goal is Goal 16. However, um, Goal 16.5, in my view, has been um, crafted in a very narrow way, because it talks about sustainably reducing corruption in all its forms. It's designed to basically focus on the public sector, and it's officially designed to measure the number of people and businesses which pay or ask to pay bribes. This, though, is only the tip of the iceberg. Most forms of corruption, including private fraud, embezzlement, misappropriation, and nepotism are not covered by this goal. So whatever we can do to widen the ambit of the interpretation of Goal 16, we should really be doing that. 
Um, time does not permit me to talk more, but with the Vatican, we have developed um, what I call the 10 corporate commandments, which are very similar to the 10 commandments that people that are Christians would know. Um, and the second thing that when we talk about ethical business, you have to understand that the business has now changed. What we now have is what I call mindful corporations, companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon, eBay. These are companies that are not focused on factories and environment and people. So the ethics that apply to mindful corporations are very, very different. The issues are big data. They have all your information. Is that ethical? The questions about fake news. They disseminate fake news that can influence elections and other things. Is that ethical? So the questions that need asking about ethical business are very, very different.